Hi and welcome to this chess lesson about King's Endgames. In this series I will discuss endgames and in this lesson specifically King's Endgame. And I will start with really the basics and try to give some practical examples on okay how can you finally convert your win after you worked really hard, got up a pawn, uh, but sometimes you're still struggling to win. So here the first uh, example. In this position, it is really important not to have the move. So the kings are opposite each other, and the one that has to move uh, basically has an issue. So if white's to move, it's a draw. If black is to move, white wins. So in this case, white is to move. The most obvious move is, of course, to play d7 because you want to promote your pawn. However, after king d8, Basically, the only move where you don't give away your pawn is to play king d6. And we have a problem because it's still made. The, the king can't go anywhere. So that doesn't work. An alternative is perhaps to just go back. But after king d8, king d5, you're basically stuck towards the same position. You can't make any progress. Okay, let's look at the same position, but then with the other color, the, the, the move reversed. So black is to move right now. So black goes again towards the promotion square, but then he has a problem because after d7, he needs to move, can't go back, and needs to go towards c7. And after king e7, it's inevitable that the pawn is promoting. This is the most basic position that there is basically in, in King's End Games. We have one pawn, two kings that are opposite each other. And the term opposition is really important, and that means that if you have two kings that are divided by one square and they're directly opposite to each other, the side that has to move is basically losing. And in the case of white, he's losing half a point because it becomes a draw. And if it's black, then yeah, he will lose the game. Uh, I'll show you why. So now white is to move. And after king d3, black can put his king again opposite of the white king so you can go back and forth but you just keep repeating if you're black the only alternative as white that you basically have is to push the pawn but in this position well black needs to go back of course you just go straight back that's the easiest way to to get your draw in this case, it's also allowed to go towards d6 or f6, but going back is just the most simple way. White goes here. And you think like, okay, we have a ladder. Just go further and further. Oh, I'm sorry. And here it's really important to go back towards e8, because then you can get the opposition again. And this is the familiar position we had earlier. And <laughs> it's a draw. And that's the reason why you always need to go back in this position, because suppose you would go towards here, you directly lose. So always, when in doubt, just go back. So same position, but then with the colors re uh, reversed. So with the, the, the move reversed, so black is to move. Now white gets to his major goal, and that is actually to reach one of these key squares. Black has to go towards the side, and white gets towards one of these positions. So, just do that 
once or twice. And in this position, you just move one. And another time, and you have again the possibility to go towards the sixth rank in this case. And here, after this move, you just promote the pawn. So again, these are the key squares. So that's two in front of the pawn. If the attacking king reaches that, he basically wins the game. A nice and simple example, but a practical example that involves, in this case, two pawns versus one pawn by black uh, by white. Now, how to win this? So, okay, we're quite well aware that that black should be winning this. You are a pawn ahead, but how to finish this off? Well, the first goal that you have is basically to push back white's pawn and try to get your own king towards e2. That's the nicest thing that would, would happen because then eventually you would kick the white king out and, and well, you just pick up the f2 pawn and you're winning. So, but first, here again, we get the opposition. So, white needs to move either to the side, well, towards b3 would give king d4, so he just goes back directly. And we have the same situation. He needs to go towards the side. But in the end, he just gets pushed back. So here, king d4. OK. Let's say king c2. Then we have e3. Now, if you take, you take back with the king. And there's basically nothing you can do. Let me quickly show you. You have to run like hell, but okay, now the white king is cut off. You go with your own king towards g2, and then the pawn just keeps running. Okay, so you can't take it, uh, but you have to be quite aware that you need to get towards f1 on time. So, okay, king d1, king d3. King e1, and then the simplest way I would say is to play f3. Now, after king f1, check king e1 has to be played because when you go towards g1, then basically the pawn promotes directly. And after king e4, you can see the nice idea that there is. So the, the black king walks around to catch the f2 pawn. And white can only shuffle back and forth between d2 and e1. So, okay, d2. Now it's white to move. The only option that he has is to go towards d2. And he can pick up the, the pawn and the next move he promotes. Suppose you make a blunder. Or at least not as good as move as the first time, and you go towards here. Then we have an issue. Because now it's black's turn to move, but even then, king g1 would be winning. Okay, another work, so uh, an issue in this practical end game. So suppose white takes over here. What happens then? Well, then basically we get towards the same position as we had uh, before, uh, but then on the other side of the board. White is to move and therefore he's losing. So king e1, e2, and he has to go towards f2. Exactly the same happens in this position. So we just played king e1, f3, and we said like, okay, and what happens after king f2? Then we have uh, e2. But what if he takes right now? Well, again the same issue. It is white to move and therefore he loses. So these were a couple of uh, 
short introductions into uh, King's Endgames. Uh, it's really the basics, and I will continue this series uh, with a lot of uh, lessons. The next one will be um, opposition, uh, but then from a longer uh, distance, and also uh, knight's opposition, which is actually kind of a tricky one that uh, happens a lot in uh, in games. Okay, see you next time.